guys. Um, I thought I would just talk a little bit about um, the idea of um, motivic development and through composed playing. And um, at the beginning there, um, I was just trying to, you know, make some melodies happen that uh, felt right to me in the moment. And, um, you know, I you know, it's common in the guitar world to um, play fast stuff because it's um, easy to capture people's attention and praise and, um, you know, it can just be kind of impressive. But at no point in that um, improvisation there did I hear anything or feel anything um, that um, motivate, motivated me to uh, play something fast. Um, if any, you know, anybody that's familiar with my playing knows that, um, I have played a lot of fast stuff in my life, and, um, as time goes on, you know, um, I'm still, um, into accessing that world, quite a lot, actually, um, but I don't want to do it in any kind of, um, forced way or any kind of artificial way where, um, I do it for the sake of playing fast and um, because you know it's important to keep in mind I think to keep in mind that you know slow ideas aren't better than fast ideas and fast ideas um, aren't better than slow ideas or you know medium paced ideas aren't better than slower or fast you know it's all just uh, we're just talking about music here you know slower music isn't worse than faster music you know there's some misconceptions I think um, because fast playing is sort of you know an easy way to impress anybody even if you aren't a you know if someone's not a musician they can at least just recognize you know technical proficiency um, but uh, yeah you know in the guitar world I think in particular it seems like anyways um, maybe on other instruments too but um, it just seems like there's this misconception that faster playing is somehow better, you know. Um, again, if you're just coming at it from the sake of, we're just trying to make music here, you know. Um, so I just wanted to kind of just uh, share some of that, um, you know, as far as like kind of my process of thinking about that and, um, you know, to help maybe encourage some of you to just kind of approach your playing um, where you're just actually trying to make ideas, you know, musical ideas. And um, so I talked, you know, at the beginning of the video, I was talking about motivic development through composed playing. So those, those are kind of like the two basic ways you can kind of think about how to organize ideas. Um, motivic development is maybe more um, common in just sort of um, ideas that are found in songs, so song melodies. Um, so let me just get to give you an, maybe just kind of an idea of motivic development, um, and um, something my camera is showing me. So, okay, um, that's, I thought my camera wasn't recording anymore. Let me just give a you know maybe an idea about that. By the way, uh, what I have uh, in here is just a random chord progression I came up with today. Um, I still do this kind of every day where. Um, I'll just string together, um, you know, some random chords to improvise over. Uh, this one is uh, E flat major seven. This, in this case, nine uh, to B seven sus four C with D in the bass, and then uh, D flat uh, seven sus. Uh, sus chords I don't play over much, so I try to kind of, you know, explore it more and kind of. Um, and kind of a way to get me to um, to use them more, basically. But uh, yeah, so here's like a you know, hopefully a good example of motivic development over this chord progression. Yeah, so it's just this kind of cell. Um, I don't even remember what I played, uh, but um, let's just say that's the idea. When the chord changes, um, 
I'm just actually kind of making it easy on myself by just moving that three note idea up. You know, so I, that second idea had some of the elements of the first idea with some extra stuff thrown in. And um, so motivic development, you know, in a quick moment, you know, it's a whole study you can kind of get into and really break it apart and analyze each way in which you can, or label each way in which you could um, create motivic development. But basically, you have an idea. Let's just say that's the idea. Um, the next thing you play will have some element of the first idea with something else that's new. And it could be a rhythmic idea that's new. Um, it could be, um, you know, um, a melodic idea. It could be, um, uh, I mean, those are the two basic ways. Um, right, so the first idea, um, that's the first idea. So then um, by doing it, in a motivic development way, you would, in a melodic way, that would be an idea or a way to, to create mo motivic development. Um, so like, you know, like a lot of classical pieces, um, use motivic development to kind of string you along into the composition. Um, it's just a way for the ear to kind of grab onto what's happening. So most guitar players, I, at least in my experience as a guitar teacher, most uh, guitar uh, students, I'll say, and you know, a lot of stuff I see online of people just kind of playing, you know, they pick up a guitar at a music store, say, and they start kind of noodling around. And by noodle, I just mean they're just playing notes, you know, there's no real like musical architecture happening. It's out of time a lot of times from what I hear. Um, and there's no like sense of direction with, with the playing. Um, for me, that's kind of a pet peeve. It makes me uh, instantly not want to listen to the person playing because it, it's not coming off particularly musical. It just sounds like they're just playing some notes on the guitar and just... And then... I don't even know. I'm, I'm not really even giving you a good example necessarily, but just, you know, notes that are happening. Um, you know, for me, if I'm going to listen to someone play, I want to hear music. So, um, yeah, so motivic development's a nice way to kind of make that happen. Through composed playing, like I was going to say in my t experiences as a guitar teacher, most guitar students seem to approach s improvising um, from a through composed position without even having spent time um, practicing and playing in a motivic development kind of way. Um, not that you have to label these different ways of playing, it's just a, a way to kind of, you know, organize it in your head, like, okay, here's a way to practice this type of soloing. Um, but through composed playing is where, you know, the ideas don't repeat, they just keep going. So it's a more advanced way of playing ideas, because you really have to um, keep track of each thing that's happening, um, so that there's a flow from one idea to the next. And um, yeah, so without any kind of repetition happening, it's it's harder to, um, it's a more, like I said, more advanced way to, to play ideas. Um, let me see if I can kind of do that. tiny moments of motivic development, but for the most part that was just kind of all through composed. Um, so yeah, you know, um, just thought I'd uh, throw out some of these ideas and perspectives um, and hopefully you, you get something out of this. And um, yeah, all right. Um, hope you enjoyed that and got something out of it. I'll talk to you guys, um, you know, in a video, you know, I don't know how often I'm going to upload, but um, maybe you guys can let me know if you have any... Um, thoughts about that, you know, um, but, uh, you know, any questions you might have, always feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'd be happy to, um, answer them, but, uh, all right, guys, uh, I'll talk to you in a video in the future, all right.